What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Josh Irby, and this is the Vital Hour. I am sitting comfortably in my Power Trip Long Tee, my Pac Man hat, and I'm going to show you the 33 albums, which all still follow the one album per artist rule, that I have to start off my collection. So, first things first, my collection started on my birthday, the night of February 28th, 2021, on my 25th birthday. And I was given my first record, one of the most important albums of all time, Iron Maiden's Number of the Beast. I was raised on Guitar Hero Metal. And uh, when I first heard Number of the Beast on Guitar Hero 3, I was absolutely blown away. Um, just hearing this heavy music, singing about stuff like the devil, which I'm not a uh, anti-religious person. It's just I had never thought of anyone ever pursuing doing a topic like paganism. My mind was blown as a little middle schooler hearing Number of the Beast, and there's so many classics off this album. Run to the Hills, How Be Thy Name, The Prisoner, Children of the Damned, underrated songs like 22 Acacia Avenue. Iron Maiden has changed my life. I have seen them first off two times live. Um, both times they were absolutely incredible, and because they just released a new album in September, probably summer of 22, I'm gonna get to see them for the third time. I'm hoping they tour again Steve Harris of Iron Maiden, who writes all the songs and is our bass player, is such a monumental influence on me. Up the Irons. That wasn't the only one I'd get on my birthday. This is King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, Not A God Infinity. This album actually does something really crazy. It relies on an infinite segue loop. So you could keep hearing the album and it could keep Repeating and repeating and repeating. Uh, my other friend, whose name is also Alex, got me this on my birthday because I, uh, along the way, King Gizzard developed in a band I took a liking to. They consistently write huge discographies as they already, I think, are at 18 albums and they're working on another one which features some heavy metal guitar, which tells me they may go in metal direction. They've done Psych, they've done Synth, they've done... R&B. This is actually more of like a psych album. I absolutely recommend this one. This and all the other records I show today, I will post a link in the chat so you can give it a listen. Oh, Metallica and Justice Bro. Metallica, like so many of you, are one of my idols. I have seen them live. 2017, Soldier Field, that was one of those concert moments where I felt tiny by comparison. I felt small. I felt like I was almost too small to be there because people like James Hetfield are just radiant, just larger than life. Why I chose Injustice for All despite being a bass player and Lars Ulrich turning the bass way down in the mix is because they're just progressive long song arrangements here. A ton of incredible guitar solos and drum fills and songs like Blackened, Injustice for All, Harvester of Sor Sorrow, it has the classic One, which I honestly may say One by Metallica is my favorite song of all time. I got this at a Barnes & Noble in Naperville. Uh, actually, this is part of the reason I was inspired to do one album for artists. I could get so many Metallica records so easily, I'm like, no, we are going to challenge the ourselves. So I got Metallica's fourth record and Justice for All. You actually just saw this one. This is Primus's Antipop. I was talking about how I've just seen Primus uh, recently. That was an absolutely incredible show. This album's interesting. It had producers such as Tom Morello of Rage Against the Machine, Fred Durst of the suddenly revived and Whip Biscuit, who just wrote a song about being a dad or whatever. Uh, Matt Stone from South Park, Stuart Copeland and Police. I uh, think this album went under the radar by Primus standards. There's a ton of good underrated tracks in here. I guess they had some issues with it because of the cleaner production by comparison and Primus disbanded for a little bit. But yes, definitely recommend this one. I think it's a very slept on album. All right, where do I even begin with the mighty Motorhead? So, as I rearrange my records, uh, Let Me Kill Mr. of Motorhead is a bass player who has heavily changed my outlook on bass um, with his distortion, with his pick bass, with his gritty, bluesy, punky style. Motorhead has been strangely lumped as a metal band, but Lemmy says we just simply play rock and roll. 
And I was profoundly upset at his passing. Uh, I believe it was around Christmas Eve 2015. So this album is obviously recognized for the track Ace of Spades, but has plenty of underrated songs or other hits like Chase is Better Than Catch, I Really Like Shoot You in the Back, Love Me Like a Reptile. If you're looking for a masterful tone band, definitely listen to Motorhead. Animals by Pink Floyd. I could have easily gone with the concept album classic Dark Side of the Moon if I really wanted to. Or The Wall, which had its own movie. I went with Animals, which apparently is about a uh, socio-political environment in Britain. Uh, this is actually a real-life factory that was drawn there. You could see the pig up in the album art. Uh, I like the I like the longer arrangements of songs. For some reason, I am a sucker for longer songs, especially if they have a long, continuous loop. This is actually an album of only five songs, but they're all very long. I uh, definitely recommend this one. It's a very uh, it's very social, political, and significant. Uh, all right, our next album. This is a band I have seen live, who unfortunately over 2020, Riley Gale at 34 from Texas, the lead singer of Power Trip, unfortunately lost his life. Uh, I almost slammed my head into my friend crowd surfing during Power Trip. Just absolute insane mosh pits, high reverb energy at the Metro in Chicago. Uh, this one, much like Primus, Motorhead, Pink Floyd, I got these actually at Kiss the Sky in Batavia, Illinois, including my next two records. Uh, Power Trip was such an incredible band live always representing i love the reverb intensity of this record just so many just headbangers it feels like i'm being slammed into a wall of, out of power all right we're going with my first punk record this is bad religion the empire strikes first uh singer grant graffin is extremely uh melodic in his vocals extremely intelligent the commonly atheist themed band from Los Angeles. Uh, this album from 2004 feels like they're one of their best mixed records. They go for, it sounds like a lower tuning. Uh, I really like the lyrics on this album. I really like the opening of Overture to Sinister Rouge. Absolutely a very underrated Bad Religion record. I have seen Bad Religion. Uh, they are actually touring right now with Alkaline Trio. I'm unable to go on this tour, but Bad Religion is a excellent live show. Ha! <sighs> the painkiller. Obviously, I just talked about how I saw Judas Priest as well. Uh, my, my old friend who I was in a band with, he was trying to convince me that this is the best record, and for some reason I disagree, and then I heard it on vinyl. Uh, Ryan, wherever you are, this is the best Judas Priest record. You're right, you win. One Shot Glory is my favorite song on the end of this track. I cannot believe they actually opened with it when I saw Judas Priest. Rob Halford is 70, the man sounds just like he's still in his prime and he still kicks ass. This record is almost too kick ass on vinyl. The drums come through so heavily, the twin guitar tones just shred through my speakers. Listening to Painkiller is a game changer on vinyl. Next up from my long records in Wheaton. Oh, so much love. This is maybe one of my five favorite albums ever. There's not a skippable track on London Calling. And the song Lost in the Supermarket off this record, uh, it still brings tears to my eyes. From a period of just isolation and sadness, loneliness as I struggle with my trauma and issues, that song really hit me. There's a ton of great ones on here. Trained in Vain, London Calling, which you probably heard. Uh, Coca-Cola is a really good one. I really like uh, Spanish Bombs, Rudy Can't Fail. This is definitely an album I absolutely recommend to everybody. And see this, uh, see this where the bass is getting smashed? I'm probably getting this tattooed at some point. I've seen Anthrax four times, and this is actually a live, this is actually a live, uh, audio of the performance from July 11, 1987 at the Arcadia Theater. I, I uh, have seen Anthrax live. Not only have I seen Anthrax live, they are one of those rare bands I've seen multiple times. I have not seen a one, two, not three. I've seen Anthrax four times. They always bring it. Fiery mosh pits, uh, just absolutely incredible rhythm. And one thing I love about this record, but even though it has a bit of a fuzzy sound because it's based on an FM radio, 
they just played banger after banger after banger. They played so many classics. Gung Ho, my favorite song off of this. They played it. Uh, this is one of the big four thrash, absolute New York legends. Bless up, Anthrax. All right, what do we have next? The toxicity of our city. Oh, System of a Down is high on my bucket list of band to see live. And this is their finest hour of a record. It is absolutely stacked with considerably incredible songs such as Toxicity, Psycho, Aerials. Uh, I really like Dear Dan's Prison Song, which talks about mass prison incarceration, which actually goes into some of the politics America has been dealing with lately. This is, this is the best metal album of 2001 that is currently in my collection because uh, there's two key ones being Converge's Jane Doe and uh, Slipknot's Iowa that I still need to get my hands on. All right, so now that I've headed through a few of mine, uh, this one was at, this next one actually ended up being a gift from my friend Colin, who has been featured in Reviewer Beware videos. He kind of took a little break from it because right now he is uh, very invested in his life goals. He is trying to enter the priesthood, yes. So he, and I absolutely support him. I'm rooting for him along the way. Colin, I love you, man. Uh, this one's dedicated to you. So funny story about getting the Beach Boys pet sounds. I, at one point, ended up being like a super like metal, like hard elitist. I tried so hard to just be so edgy and cool because I thought I was a badass. And I constantly was just not into the Beach Boys and the really like surfy sound. But, you know, as I got around to listening to this record, which apparently I think due to inflation is currently worth about half a million to produce, which is insane. This surf pop record has so many different intricate parts and intricate sounds. I would say this is one of the best mixed and produced albums of all time. This actually balances out the heavy headbanger portion of my record with a little more of a smooth ride to it. And I absolutely appreciate it for that. I uh, definitely have come around on the Beach Boys and I appreciate this record. All right, let's make one thing clear. I'm from Chicago and I'm an obnoxious asshole sports fan. So I got the Super Bowl shuffle for $14.99 at half price books, baby. Uh, can I just make one thing clear about the Super Bowl Shuffle? This is one of the most arrogant songs ever made, and let me tell you why. They, the 85 Bears, they made this song before they even started the playoffs and won the Super Bowl. They were so confident, so loving and kissing up to themselves. They wrote this before they knew where they were even gonna win and they kicked the living snot out of everybody. Can we please have that happen again in modern culture? Do I really need to talk about our metal overlords, Black Sabbath and the gods, Ozzy Osbourne? So actually I've seen Black Sabbath on their farewell tour when I was 20, that was my first really really huge concert because i for some reason as a kid didn't know how to pursue it enough oh my god uh it was just as perfect as you imagine paranoid is a classic yeah you're paranoid your war pigs your iron man just the instrumentation the vocals just everything about black sabbath's second record is just a masterpiece and i don't want to think about the idea of ozzy dying I don't think he's going to. Uh, I'm going to chalk off Rush. This is Moving Pictures, their best record with classics such as Red Barchetta, The Camera Eye, obviously YYZ. Just seven absolutely incredible songs. The, the incredible trio of Getty Lee, Alex Lifeson, and the late great Neil Peart. Rest in peace. This, I wish I saw Rush live. I'm pissed off that I never did, man. Rush is just an incredibly influential trio. Seeing their album of Farewell to Kings, though, which obviously I chose a different one, covered by Primus was pretty awesome. But yes, I, uh, this is actually a big pickup. I got this in Downers Grove, just like I did, uh, 
Paranoid, which is at a disc replay. I got this at the local downtown Downers Grove record store. Uh, I will post this and every other element I have in the links. Testament, The Legacy. Thrash. Uh, not quite Big Four, but Thrash Bay Area icons from San Francisco. This is their debut album. It's funny thinking about Testament because their first run and second run, they feel like like a concept of the Bible, like the Old and New Testament, because later on, Chuck Billy's vocals just got beefier and heavier. This was back when they sounded a lot more similar to Metallica than you think, but there's a ton of good ones. Over the Wall, Burnt off Offerings. I really like Alone in the Dark off the second side of this record. I got this actually out in Wisconsin, and I got an awesome uh, CD. Silver Vinyl. I got this at one of the branches of the exclusive company in Wisconsin. Next up is my Chicago trip to Reckless Records. Ah, I can feel all you emos just radiating. This is, okay, I'm gonna say a controversial take. MCR's Black Parade is a masterpiece with a son of masterful song, masterful songs. Welcome to Black Parade is one of the greatest songs ever made. This is MCR's best record. Three cheers for Sweet Revenge. The guitar tone is very compressed, but I absolutely like the way it sounds compressed on here. It gives it a super crunchy feeling. There's a ton of great songs like The Ghost of You, uh, Thank You for the Venom's my personal favorite. Absolutely inc incredible lyrics. MCR is a band that I will be seeing next year at Riot Fest. This is a band I never could have had a chance to see because lead singer Chuck Schuldner died when I was five. This is Death's Scream Bloody Gore. This is the first, this is what I consider to be the first death metal album ever made. Uh, Chuck Schuldner was an absolute, absolute genius in death metal. Um, the tracks on here, it's funny because they actually had to mix it twice because they didn't like the original mix. I love the mix on here. It feels raw, it feels dirty, it feels unimpolished, much like Death Metal did. There's a certain C swear word that I can't say that is said a lot on here, like in true Death Metal fashion. Great pickup. Nobody knows who Queen is. No, no Freddie Mercury is too obscure for modern society. This is based on the movie made off of the obscure man who's too obscure for modern society, Freddie Mercury. This is Bohemian Rhapsody. It's a mix of soundtrack songs from this obscure artist named Freddie Mercury. Uh, most of them are tracks that were originally recorded for studio albums. A lot of performances from Live Aid, which was the greatest uh, music performance from an obscure band like Queen. You know, re real obscure stuff, right? Uh, my personal opinion of the movie is that the movie hit on a lot of high notes. There were some inaccuracies, but I really did enjoy the film. And I really enjoyed that I found this soundtrack at Reckless Records. Uh, so, you know, I got three great records from Reckless Records. Uh, next part of my story, I kind of went on a little record binge coming up. I bought nine albums from the state of Wisconsin. But first, let's talk about the album I bought from Downers Grove on the way. This is a soundtrack of the Angry Video Game Nerd number one and two deluxe video games. Uh, it's a very, it almost sounds like metal as James Rolfe is a metalhead, but in like pixelated form. Uh, if you're gonna play the games, and look at the beautiful, tremendous artwork, oh my God. They're hard as balls. They are so hard. I, there are no invincibility frames, so if you make one false twitch, you're just dead. Uh, Angry Video Game Nerd as a YouTuber is one of my idols. I've dealt with a lot of anger related issues and dealt with not knowing how to construct my anger or stress well and just watching him just cuss up a storm like a sailor and make amazing videos, I worship the man. All right, the next part of my story is I bought nine amazing records from the state of Wisconsin when I went with my friend Ben. It was such an awesome record trip. Oh man, I gotta start from the beginning. So, 
One of my experiences at Riot Fest that I had a lot of fun with was seeing Guar. Me and my friend Ben were talking about what it'd be like to finally see Guar. He did not enjoy the rude, distasteful jokes. I thought it was hilarious. I got covered in blood, slime, slime, and some other stuff. Who knows? This is their quintessential album, Scum Dogs of the Universe. This is considered the magnum opus of Guar. You're looking at a lot of hilarious comedy metal built around the theme about how much humans suck ass and how much Guar wants to get rid of and exterminate them. It does break my heart that uh, I think in 2014, singer David Brocky died of an overdose as he was a truly incredible icon. So it's good to celebrate the music on the 35th anniversary edition of Scum Dogs of the Universe from Richmond, Virginia's Guar. Okay. I noticed that I hadn't gotten a Beatles record, so I picked up the best produced and the greatest Beatles record, Fight Me, it is Abbey Road. Uh, so many good songs like Maxwell, Silver Hammer, Octopus Garden. I love, 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 love the way this album was produced. It is so smooth like butter. It is so beautiful. Uh, some people criticize the fact that it was overproduced, but bah humbug. This was technically considered the final, this was the final time the Beatles recorded together. There was a weird conspiracy on it too. They, there was a conspiracy that Paul McCartney died, which is crazy because of the four Beatles left, he's one that's still alive. All right, so uh, at that same store, I got the Guar and Beatles record, uh, the exclusive company. I got Led Zeppelin IV, Stairway to Heaven, Black Dog, uh, when the Levi breaks, so many classics. This is probably one of the most masterful albums ever made. The infamous Led Zeppelin IV. I never realized just how like smooth Robert Plant's vocals feel, especially on vinyl. This one, this one is an absolute classic. Had to get my Led Zeppelin. In. All right, next up, I went to I believe it was Strictly Discs out in Milwaukee and I thought it struck out but I picked up two albums uh, this is my first true hip hop record the Enter, Enter the Wu-Tang Clan baby 36 Chambers I had a chance to see Wu-Tang Clan at Riot Fest the day I saw Guar in 2019 I saw Rise Against instead who I saw again another time I believe I didn't make the best decision because this album is a masterpiece uh, it's very low fidelity for a hip hop record. There's not a ton of like crunch, just like disgustingness. It's very like, there's not a ton of like huge poppy production value. It just goes hard for being minimalistic. Absolutely recommend it. You know, you got your RZA, Method Man, Old Dirty Bastard, Raekwon. Oh, absolutely a classic hip hop record. All right, um, this is a band who I saw at Knotfest, Gojira from France. This is Fortitude, their 2021 record, very built around positive em empowerment themes, uh, empowering oneself through positivity in the worst of circumstances. Gojira is one of the most consistent bands in metal overall. I don't think they've really produced a, a record I've said, yeah, this is garbage. They produce a lot of really good sounds. They went more progressive and melodic and didn't go as like hard hitting as some of their other records. But I really enjoy how cohesively this one went together on one concept. I was glad to find it. Now it's uh, my Gojira album. Um, next up was a record store, Mad City Records. I did not know I would be this blown away by what I got. Uh, first off, this is Weezer's Blue Album. Now, Weezer is completely different from the type of stuff I listen to now. This and another album, which I still am on the hunt for, which I'll get around to, are one of my very two first records I ever listened to and took in. Um, and it still holds up to this day. This was, uh, I'd say compared to most of my records I got in this collection, this is more of a sentimental pick with stuff like My Name is Jonas, Buddy Holly. My favorite is In the Garage. Uh, I don't really know if I'm huge on the rest of Weezer's discography, but their first record is an absolute masterful debut. Um, I'm so glad to have this one. I feel so sentimental towards it. 
All right, uh, this is definitely the shortest album, Earth AD, uh, with Glenn Danzig's Misfits. I am seeing them at Riot Fest next year as well. I missed them on their first chance to see at Riot Fest 2016, the horror-based Misfits. This is more of a hardcore-like punk record, horror record, compared to most of their stuff, and I'm glad I have it because it's Halloween time. There's something weird about this one, actually. I cannot hear this at full speed unless I press this speed up knob in the middle of my record player. Yeah, I have to press to speed up to hear it at full speed. Think about that. Uh, the biggest reason to have this one is because Green Hell is the best Misfit song ever made. Sepultura from Brazil. Um, so they don't have the Cap Calvera brothers, which were basically the best part of the band. Uh, this record, Arise, is, it's hands down the best Sepultura album. Arise, Dead Embryonic Cells, Desperate Cry, Infected Voice. This is a very death thrashy record. I definitely recommend this one if you're trying to get into this type of metal. This album is just nasty. Absolutely a pop. All right. Uh, the last album I got is actually a different type of vibe. This is The Sciences by Sleep, released on 420 2018 um, So this was actually a comeback album by the band. Uh, one thing you might notice, yes, that is a marijuana nug. Actually, you can see the weed here. Sleep is the stoner metal icons. Um, they rely on more of a slower hypnotic trance music, a lot of like fuzzy guitar tone, really loud crash cymbals and drums are not playing at the fastest speed. I absolutely recommend this album a lot. Um, I really like the hypnotic trance that Sleep puts me in every time I listen to this. And I'm really glad this 20, this 420 Miracle entered my collection. All right, so the next two are actually dedicated to my guy, Mike Patton. Get healthy. This is Mr. Bungle's Raging Wrath of the Easter Bunny demo, uh, released in the end of 2020. Uh, there's a couple big hitters. Uh, rhythm guitarist Scott Ian of Anthrax and s former Slayer drummer Dave Lombardo were recruited for this. This album's uh, a re-recorded demo of the songs they wrote out in high school. Uh, this is a fun, goofy little thrash record. There was even a weird interlude where they did the La Cucaracha, well, a thrash version of it. Uh, th this record's not trying to be super intelligent or well-crafted, but this is a fun one. I picked it up at the local disc replay in Downers Grove, which is the best disc replay in the state. All right. Uh, oh, I feel so happy I got this. This was bought in Greece. This is for you, Mike Patton. This album has become one of my favorite albums ever. This is Faith No More, Angel Dust, released in 1992, the fourth album by alternative metal act, Faith No More. There is not a single skippable song on this record. This is one of those rare records that I would actually say is a master, a perfect 10, as Fantano would like to say. You got Midlife Crisis, you got Kindergarten, you got Jizz Lobber, you got Everything's Ruined. I absolutely am so glad I found this in Greece. This album gave me so much trouble to find, but I went to a Greek online store, bought it. This one's for you, Mike Patton. This is such a killer record. I have one last record I bought off Revolver Magazine, a disgusting metal album from 1981. 40th anniversary edition, Venom, Welcome to Hell. You got the poster, you got that black and gold. So, yes, this is a satanic pentagram. No, you, no, I'm not a satanist. No, I'm not some evil devil worshiper. I just think this album is really nasty, antagonistic, super like disgusting. It had such a huge influence on black metal and extreme metal as a whole. I just like that. I like the fact that, despite the fact that Venom weren't really that great of musicians and were really sloppy, and the drum tone wasn't the best, they made amazing songs out, and they made something so dirty and vile. And I absolutely am glad I found this on pre-order at Revolver Records. So those are my first 33 records, and obviously we have more coming. I'm working on getting more like. 
albums based on bands I've seen live because there's so many bands I, I don't have a record of that I've seen live and I'm absolutely working on that. A uh, few, few more things before I go. I have to say I've absolutely enjoyed the hell out of this project in the about eight or so months I've spent on it. I love playing my records. I absolutely love spinning and I love the fact that I'm doing one album for artists. It gives me a lot of different perspectives and different sounds, different versatilities. I want to show you what I bought for now. Uh, this is the Airbnb Vinyl the Hour. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to share the records in the video, give them a spin, see if